Hi, I'm Brad, and I don't know what this thing is. It's been a little bit of time since I made my last video and released it, but just so you know, I am working on a few interesting projects that I think are very interesting, um, especially that Quest Pro review that's been kind of inking my brain to finish, and those things are coming soon. But those list of videos are not really spontaneous projects like this video is. Um, literally yesterday, something came out that really piqued my interest and I had to make this video right away because I want more people to try it out and, and basically talk about it and see what they think. So mixed reality is something that's being hyped a lot in the VR bubble right now immensely. But just to spoil some parts of my upcoming Quest Pro review, I do think the actual functionality and the quality of mixed reality is very gimmicky right now and does not feel like something that should be a target feature for a $1,500 device, but at least it's there for developers to tinker with. Now, the one reason I wanted to bring that all up is because there's a headset that came out almost four years ago, if you can believe that, that has color pass through cameras. And the whole point was when they released it is they wanted to give developers the chance to build AR apps with full color. Never happened. You see those cameras? If you have this headset, you probably never use them because Valve never really gave any API layer to use them usefully. They basically just became for some people a way to just quickly grab a beer or something. And even that, a lot of people don't even use that. But thanks to a very good member of the community known as Rectus, who makes a lot of cool Steam VR, Open VR well, just a lot of neat little experiments. They actually created an OpenXR API pass-through layer that allows you to actually use this if developers support OpenXR pass-through. And he literally launched that yesterday, and within a few hours, the first app to support it was also released, at least under an experimental branch. You might remember Tilt Brush. It came out in 2016 with the HCC Vive. It was developed by Google, a monolithic company. However, a couple years ago, they did abandon that project, but right before they abandoned it, they did something that is a pretty cool guy move. They made it open source so people can just grab it and add the features they want because it was no longer being supported. Meanwhile, most of the software industry just kind of kills support, and if it's on a central server, you can never use that software again. So this is the complete opposite side. I just thumbs up for that. But again, after uh, Rectus released that pass-through API, someone actually added support for it in the open brush experimental branch so you can put on this headset and actually do mixed reality drawing in your real life space everything you can do in tilt brush but in your real life view and let me tell you i was actually genuinely surprised at how well it kind of worked i mean sure it's very gimmicky and the pass-through quality of this thing is not the best because it's four-year-old cameras even though they're you know they're full color and everything but it is something I think people should try out. But that's not the only reason I made this video. I really wanted to show off some functionality that I think is very important to understand why Valve might have been updating stuff such as the SteamVR overlay, the dashboard, and everything else coming to SteamVR eventually so much. Because everything that works for overlays with VR also works with MR. In some ways, some things that also work on VR work better in MR, mixed reality. So here's some very just simple experiments that I can show you right away, such as downloading a PNG or GIF or whatever, and just placing that on your empty wall to make it look more beautiful. I can even imagine people going to a crazy length to make giant collages and making your entire wall just a bunch of mean garbage images. But hey, better than an empty wall. And of course, you can add actual audio or video, music videos into your space, whatever size, whatever sort of length you want. And the one interesting thing about it is if you do this while we're using OpenBrush, you can sort of draw and mark things around your environment while you're playing music because OpenBrush still has those audio enabled brushes that look cool. So I just had lag train playing and just drew things around it, mark what things were, and it gave like cool little flashing or blinking effects. If you're obsessed with looking at shitstorms on the internet, well, you know, there's Twitter and you can put up a little Twitter view to keep up to date with any news or other garbage that happens daily. I'm a fan of 3D printing, so I like to uh, actually start a 3D print right before I enter VR, and I'm able to just grab that window and just throw it where the 3D printer is. So not only can I walk to the 3D printer, see what I'm doing, mark things, draw around it, but I also can see the actual uh, digital software status of what it's printing, and that's a neat little thing too. Of course, another little gimmick is being able to actually grab your full desktop, place it over your real life one, because you're not going to be able to see anything with the uh, really the the pass-through cameras on the Quest Pro or Index for that matter, 
But at least you can see where everything is on your desk while having that view. Um, and when you go behind your monitor, it disappears. So that's kind of immersive in a way. But basically, any SteamVR overlay that's built or developed or, or, or tinkered with, you can just place in your environment and it works for MR and VR. Now, there's also two more big features that Valve has been working on in the back end for a good amount of time now, uh, updating it almost every other SteamVR beta update. And that's the theater mode and the in HMD room setup. So when I was using the Quest Pro for an entire month, I actually was playing a lot of flat games while wearing the headset. And it was probably the first time where the visual quality of things were actually to the point where I can imagine, yes, I would definitely play flat games if this headset was more comfortable for my head. I can't say that about the index, but I was able to actually test out the ability of creating an entire game window in my space. And the funny thing is I actually was doing a remote play experience for my Steam Deck, whereas uh, the Steam, the basically my main desktop PC will stream the game to my Steam Deck and I can launch the game from my PC to my Steam Deck. Well, when I did launch that uh, Dota 2, for example, the funny thing is it actually showed the VR view on my Steam Deck rather than the game view. But the main point I wanted to really say why that's better in MR than VR is the there's a kind of a huge disconnect of playing flat games in VR with a big virtual window because you can't see your controller sometimes. And that might be kind of important if you want to click a button easily um, or even a keyboard easily. And the experimental theater mode being worked on within Steam VR is the fact that it's going to add stuff such as reflections and brightness and be able to what it seems to be give off light based on what's being shown on the screen. That does not work right now, but I can imagine if they got that working for VR, but especially AR, it would look really compelling and way more interesting than buying a giant TV that would be way more expensive than just buying a headset that is either one day more comfortable and just good enough resolution to have a giant screen in your, your view. I think there's a huge potential for that. But there's also one more feature I talked about very little because I wasn't able to show it off very well. So there's a feature known as the uh, in HMD room setup that is kind of hidden away in a couple of menus that you have to activate tweaking some strings. And it's exactly as it says. Uh, basically, SteamVR has been using the same room setup since it came out with the ACC Vive. It closes all programs, opens up a Unity app. You have to do it outside the headset. Basically, do everything while you're looking at your window uh, on your desktop PC. It's terrible, terrible. It's so outdated these days. But there is an in HMD room setup that not only allows you to stay inside the actual program you're running, such as OpenBrush did not close when I was using it, and basically it makes you let, uh, make you click your floor and mark out the walls in your room by actually going there and touching them. But the problem is, is the feature never automatically activated any cameras, so I was never able to show that off before and how useful it was. Obviously, you cannot mark out where your walls are without being able to see your real life environment. And that's just kind of important. But now you could. And I was able to see how well it works. And obviously, it's very uh, buggy, but it did let me do everything I wanted to do. So it's exciting to see that this program is possible and it's, it's being worked on. And it was just I was happy to finally test it out. But obviously, because this is a hack together software, um, there is some issues with it or issues or things that are not ideal compared to a real mixed reality headset right now. And that's uh, the main thing is you have to use the room view 2D. So even though this does have two cameras, um, there is a no depth correction software being added to the MR with this API layer. There is something called a room view 3D that was built by Arctris Industries with Valve, um, the same people that seem to be working on the actual um, inside out tracking technology with cameras um, internally within Valve as well. And the CEO of this company seemed to have hinted a lot that whenever they do actually update that old RoomView 3D software, they'll allow access for developers to use it. It just doesn't, it, it's not possible right now. Now this is better than the, what the Pico 4 kind of gave off because there are two cameras, two color cameras here instead of one uh, single camera in the middle like the Pico 4 but it's still obviously not deaf correct and some things might be a little wonky and it's not comfortable for long periods of time, just like, well, most mixed reality headsets right now, to be honest. There's also the issue is you cannot mark things in your environment. So if you ever have a desk or a thing in the middle of your room, like my desk is, um, whenever you kind of go around things, they'll always be overlaid on top of things. So if something's far away uh, behind your monitor, it'll always show in front of your monitor, if that makes sense. And Obviously, that's not something you can do with the index right now or really Steam VR. You can do that with Quest Pro. You literally mark out boxes and over every furniture and they will just 
stop the rendering around that box and it doesn't look amazing, but it's better what SteamVR currently allows. And there's no depth buffer being added for apps to be able to overlay a lot of these things that you draw in OpenBrush, for example, over those overlay windows. But despite all these things, these are things that Valve can add in the future if they ever wanted to push with the cameras, which they seem to be doing for future headsets. There's a lot of stuff around cameras and mixed reality, a lot of hype in the industry right now. And I really wanted to make this video to show that what Valve is building is a cross-platform overlay system that developers can use. You can use any desktop window from your PC, your Windows, or Linux and just slap in your environment. There's a lot of capabilities you can think of, and I just showed some of the basic ones in this video. So I hope you enjoy that, and I hope you check it out. Seriously, check the description. Anyway, special thanks to all my mega patrons that support me in doing this. I try to make this job not as bad as a job because I feel there's no point in doing YouTube because <laughs> it doesn't pay that well in, uh, in all seriousness. But I like to do YouTube because it's interesting. It's fun. I can do it and enjoy it. So as long as I keep making money from this um, and having fun, I think the, I think the content is better um, doing that. So I'm very thankful to these people that support that and allow me to keep doing these things. And I'll have some more videos coming out very soon. Bye.